for and it. I, it's a tough API. one to answer because, I mean, I'm in favor. Um, I don't have any hangups. And, you know, Jamie, who's our web developer at this point, and, um, you know, the guys in the back end, like, you know, Colin and, and uh, you know, those guys that handle the back end systems. Um, yeah, I'm not, a, I'm not opposed. So I think now that phase three is out, I can't answer, you know, necessarily if we track exactly what people were looking for. We track a lot. Uh, we track, you know, there's always limitations as to what we can track from, you know, database loads and such. But I'm sure we track a lot of interesting things that people would like. So I'm, I don't really have any hangups, at least I can think of right now. Um, it's something that can be brought up. I know that Fox in the past had, we had some, some API functionality for the map. Um, I'm not sure if that is exactly what you're looking for now or just the depth of what people are looking for. So the answer is probably somewhere in the middle that like people are probably wanting a lot more than we have or can give, but we can probably give a lot more than we're giving now because we're giving nothing. So, um, I think there's, there's got to be something there that we can probably do. So to give you an example, Russ, even if you just released the current info that's like on pilot skill, uh, your pilot um, stats page and stuff would go a long way. Um, but a lot of people have, and obviously I have experience with like EVE Online where you have like battle reports and and the the reason why this is really important for the uh, leagues and stuff is, is it just makes everything automated to where they can show who was in the battle who had what on what mech and so forth. And, you know, anyways, it's a big thing. And I think it's already tracked there. And uh, a lot of people have requested over the, the years. So I think it would be uh, one of those things that uh, you get some uh, some credit for. Um, it sounds interesting. I Again, I don't know for sure. I can't speak technically as to what we have. But, I mean, it sounds cool. You know, let's just find out what we have and see if we can give it. Sounds good. Cool. Any thoughts on updating the critical hit system? For example, being able to crit components like actuators, engines, electronics, life support, etc., and having actual in-game consequences for those components being destroyed, um, and also adding like additional bitching Betty cues for those things being destroyed. Uh, what do you think on that? Obviously, that's not being designed right now or anything like that. But have you considered? That's that's a bit of a tough one because. Where I come out on that is, and um, you know, and maybe I shouldn't, and and it's one of those things where it's like, okay, we have a really complex game, um, comparatively to other games. You know, we're niche. We are what we are. We're mech warrior, et cetera, et cetera. Like you know, like this term, that term. I can use all sorts of vernacular to kind of describe who we are. And I guess there's two schools of thought. It's like either accept who you are and become more and more who you are, meaning more and more complex and more and more deep, more and more difficult to grasp. And a lot of people out there are saying, well, there's smart ways to do it where it's kind of like an extra layer, layer of depth if you know how to interpret it, but you don't necessarily have to. But, you know, if you're taking critical hits on engines and starting to run hotter, obviously that runs, that's a lot more complexity to, you know, newer players or those trying to be introduced to Mech Warrior. So, we already have an extremely deep game, and I guess the question is: Will our is is our player base base even if I make it more complex? Is that going to be what the current player base wants, and the current player player base will be happier, and that the current player base will continue to be consistent, and that'll be great, or will it can will it decline because there is a quotient or a certain percentage of newer players trying it out, seeing what it is, bumping into it on Steam or on our website or our portal, and that those particular percentage of players will be lost and even harder off, et cetera. And so therefore your your player base becomes even a little bit more, a little smaller, a little more hardcore, a little more refined to just the hardcores. That's a difficult thing to answer for a free-to-play game that, you know, you know, frankly, needs to is always trying to better itself to try to bring in as many players as possible to remain viable. And so, as as a product, so I don't know. I, that's always a tough thing because you have a lot of players saying, "Hey, can you go further, deeper? You know, more with canon lore, battle tech, mech warrior, 
deep, 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 you know, complex, complex. And we're already a pretty complex game. So would I consider it? Yes. Do I know for sure whether we do it? I don't know. I don't know for sure how I find out that answer to become comfortable doing it. That's, I, don't, I don't know. I, that's the best I can do for now. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's understandable. In a lot of aspects of this game design, you're having to make business decisions because you got to keep business running uh, to where, you know, issues like this and balance, new features, whatever, have to be weighed against uh, simplicity, um, you know, easing the new player experience, getting new people interested. Uh, and me, also, uh, Phil, mm -hmm. let me jump in right there. Or sorry, Darren, and say, yep. um, you know, just what you're saying is so true. Like, meaning, I mean, okay. The only reason you're playing, I mean, I, I don't want to, I want this to come across the right way, but like. I know where you're going. Mech, Microsoft is, was not going to create MechWarrior Online or the Mech, or the MechWarrior game that you guys play today. My opinion is that they would create Mech Assault. That's where they think the market is big enough for them to actually justify making something if that, even that is questionable, I would say. But nobody was going to make a MechWarrior product. So we decided to make what we knew, even going off the gate, was a, probably a fairly niche product, being a MechWarrior-centric core product. So we're, I think we're already pushing the limits that no other larger publisher developer would ever consider going to we've been able to go there and we've been able to make it work as a smaller developer but i think we're already running riding that cusp we're already riding that line a line so that no one else would have even come close to riding yes so that's why i'm questionable saying geez we're already like probably over the line as far as other companies would ever be comfortable going to they'd be much more third person super action the mech assault type of product and we're not, and we're already like super hardcore from their point, point of view, even from mine. And um, we have to be careful going further in that direction from where we are now. Most I comparable games, and we play them all, Phil and I, um, do their, the direction that the these free-to-play arena-style games are going is simplifying. And in fact, when they bring in things that are a little bit more in-depth and complicated and, and whatever, it tends to not uh, become be popular and either get axed or modified to be made simpler. The question is, of course, is the Battletech Mech Warrior community different from other communities that may be in right. more, you know, is and that's... It, is it what it is? Meaning, yes. are all these people that play the game the same people that have been playing and that will continue to play and will even continue to enjoy it more if we do those things? Yep. Or will it get smaller? Because some would fall off if it gets more complex or a certain percentage of our size comes from new players. And so I think you have to assume that some percentage does. And so that's really tough because once you make that decision, if it turns out to be, oh my God, now we've just shrunk to like, you know, a tiny fraction of like the super hardcore players. They're the only guys that enjoy it now. And to them, it's the best thing that's ever existed. And like, oh my mm -hmm. God, here we go. It's like, great. I'm glad you feel that way. But a lot of people feel that way about Biotech 3025, right? I mean, I know a lot of people have a lot of fond memories in their heart, but there's a reason I never made it out of beta, right? I mean, I don't know, you know, Yeah. I don't know all the reasons. We I just talked to some of the people over there that made it and, and make no mistake about it. I mean, you know, if, if they thought it was the product that was going to be successful and it's going to make money, the product would have been, would have been made and it would have existed for many years to come. But the decision was made that it wasn't viable. It was too hardcore. It wasn't going to have a place in the marketplace. It just wasn't going to work. So I, I think our player base always has to, they have to forget the notion that like, oh my God, I, you know, I know how much I love MechWarrior and like, if only Prana would do this, this, and this, it would be like bigger than Halo. Okay. I know there's not many people that think that way and feel that way, but some people that just, that's an exaggeration of some right. feeling that like, it can be way, 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 way bigger than it is. And it's, I mean, we can see the fact that, you know, Microsoft didn't make anything for, you know, a good 10 years. And at this point, it's been a good 14 years since the last single player game. So 
that's for that's for a good reason. That's because the modern game market says, hey, if you can't sell at least five million units, you know, when you're one of these larger publishers, you don't bother. So we're definitely a niche product, and I think there is a market for someone like Piranha Games to make a game like Mac or Online, have it be viable, and have it be you know at least somewhat profitable for them as a small company, and to think about making single player products, but people should just understand that we're always riding that line. Well, I think there's something to be said too of saying there's a difference between immersion and depth and complexity. And I think sometimes that conversation, those get construed when you just hear complexity. And what you're saying is if you make like Mecha Online, the hardcore, you know, mech sim where it's almost like being in a, you know, a, a you know, cockpit of a mech and all these dials, yes, it would cater towards a very niche. But I think that's what a lot of people are saying is, you know, out there is the depth and immersion factors is they would like to obviously see more. And of course, I know you would. Um, but I think sometimes that conversation piece gets a little bit skewed and um, it gets sort of last, lost in the translation. It probably does. But the original question was around, hey, would you consider critical hits to like components and like actuators? Just think of that term, actuators, right? actuators and engine critical hits so like you know you're running all across the map you take a shot from a gauss you know in the first 30 seconds and you're running across the open field and your left arm actuator has been destroyed you know that's a pretty complex notion right that's not depth that or, or like lower in depth that is that's complexity anyone disagree would like to take up that argument <laughs> Well, I mean, it's, it's, again, I think it's just a, a lot of different opinions. Everybody thinks their opinion is right. Um, everybody has different perspective, uh, you know, and, but the bottom line is one of my favorite sayings in the world is you don't know what you don't know. And what you're saying is that you don't know necessarily whether adding depth, complexity, immersion, whatever you want to call it is going to be a better business decision. Of course, it's going to make, you know, it would more depth you know, whatever would make a lot of people happy or some people happy or a group of people happy, but whether or not it's the right decision for Mech Warrior being around in three, five years from now and all that stuff, who knows, but it, you know, you're looking at it, it you're examining, you're, you're, you're uh, considering anyway. So uh, Phil, we got another one. Yes. Uh, actually uh, this has to do with the global Mech rescale effort. Is it still on track? And then, uh, you recently posted up uh, pictures, and there's been um, the live stream um, with uh, Lauren about the uh, you know the new mech coming out, the Phoenix Hawk, um, and a lot of people were like, "Hey, that looks bigger than the Marauder." Do you want to just sort of talk about the whole process because you said on Twitter that it's actually in uh, as in reason as far as scale internally? Yeah, I mean, I think people unfortunately you know they're creating a situation where. You know, we can't really do anything, you know, like we can't have a live stream with Lauren who's doing texture art, which has nothing to do with rescale. And people look at that and start making assumptions about rescale when really she, what she's doing is streaming texture. So she might be working with models and people don't know if the models are the rescaled models or the non-rescaled models or the rescaled Phoenix Hawk next to the non-rescaled Vindicator. I mean, we're not saying, hey, Lauren, make sure when you stream about texturing that you're taking into consideration everyone's going to be looking at that from a rescale perspective so um people need to think about that and other than that it's really it's mathematical it's scientific it is what it is i mean i've seen that image where people are judging the phoenix hawk i've seen personally the phoenix hawk next to the vindicator next to other 45 ton mechs 40 ton mechs 50 ton mechs and it looks perfect you know that's because People think that the Vindicator was too, scaled too big. Well, I mean, you know, several things have happened since then. The Vindicator has been scaled down and other mechs has been scaled up. And so you, you have to, for, you have to wipe from your memory that like the Vindicator is too big type of mentality because you don't know what the size of the new Vindicator is. And you certainly don't know what the new size of the Vindicator is compared to the Centurion or compared to the Shadow Cat or compared to the Phoenix Hawk and all the things around it. So and the Blackjack, of course, is brought up a lot. Blackjack got scaled up, which is too big. I mean, everything just works. So you can be disappointed, like, oh, my God, they scaled up the, Vin the Blackjack. I'm Life sucks now. Well, it doesn't suck because all the stuff around that was scaled too big has been brought down. All of it's been too small has been brought up. So it's just right-sized now. Everything's right-sized so I don't know what to say other than 
Yes, it's on track. Um, it's a it's a June release. As of this moment, I think the June release is still viable, and that I'll uh, at this point the the catapult the Butterbee, worst mech name ever, is still coming out that month, <laughs> um, and all the rescales, and that's going to be great. I mean, you know, forget what you think you know. Like it, like the Zeus is too small and the Awesome's too big. I mean. Everything's been, I mean, scientifically, mathematically, it's all going to be perfect with each other via volume. And no, there's a lot of people out there saying, you know, you got two camps just saying, don't let mech scale be a notion of balance. Like, meaning if something's got less hard points and generally weaker, don't make it tiny to make it compete. Make everything scale perfectly with each other, then quirk. The lower performing mechs. That's the that's the that's where I come in. I, that's what I think is the correct point of view. It's like, you know, we're gonna first scale everything perfectly to each other, and then we'll go to like say the, you know, I don't know, pick a mech, whether it's still the Vindicator, or whether it's um, some other underperforming mech, and say, well, now it's perfectly scaled, so now let's now let's cork it or tweak it or whatever right but this the scale shouldn't be a notion of how we balance a mech that that's where i come out and yes everything's on track it's beautiful life is good the whole bit. excellent uh just bouncing back real quick to community warfare this uh a few people one person asked in chat a few people uh seconded it thirded it whatever um and you're and if you don't want to go this direction that's fine just let me know but they basically said uh, regarding back to community warfare queues, random battles, all that. Why uh, have random battles at all? In other words, the solo queue and the group queue. Why not have everybody dropping in community warfare? I don't know if you touched on on that at all, but um, is that anything you want to address? Well, I think the answer is pretty obvious. I mean, sorry. I mean, I know for a lot of people that are more hardcore and you know, kind of exist in a unit or whatever, it seems obvious. Bring the entire community together. Put them in the same right. queues. But look at someone from a solo perspective. I mean, first off, you're telling them they, they can't just play. Well, I know scouting modes change a little bit because those matches are shorter. But you can't just jump in and grab an eight-minute solo queue match. You're committed to potentially, you know, a 25 to 30-minute invasion match where you can get seal clubbed. I mean, I was told today by you know, more of a unit player that, you know, they just mm -hmm. dominated and stomped everyone and seal clubbed them and like the whole bit with, you know, long Tom, et cetera. Yep. Community warfare is more of a hardcore mode. You're more of a committed mode. It's like, that's where, I, you know, I get a lot of comments from people saying, hey, freelancers, let freelancers take contracts. I mean, my point of view is freelancer is the player who really doesn't, want to play community warfare they're not committed to community warfare but they're willing to look at the call to arms coming up and jump into matches and that's great they can help fill those matches and if there ever comes a point where they feel like they want to become a part of community warfare they can then pledge loyalty or join a unit or something and i just right now i still think there's a notion that people need to decide that they want to participate in the longer game time, the longer game modes, the harder, more hardcore aspect of MechWare Online versus just saying, if you if you log in, you know we're shoving you into these, you know, more hardcore aspects of MechWare Online. Sure. Phil, you got one. Yep, just one sec. Uh, Zachary Strife says, I have a loaded question. What exactly are, are you going to do for the new player experience? Are long-term casual or long-term casual players? As of right now, uh, Steam stats are showing a consistent 15 to 20% loss per month. Uh, oh, so you're saying because of the new player experience? Yes, Got it. potentially. I guess uh, you know it comes to retention of players. I don't know. I mean, it's, it is a loaded question, isn't it? Uh, what do you mean to say? I mean, I get loaded. I get loads of questions saying, "How are you going to make the game way more hardcore?" And then I get other ones saying, "What are you going to do to the, you know, accessible so that the Steam stats, you know, are good?" 
I mean, as far as Steam stats go, I anticipated it would say exactly this. I mean, I didn't expect it to be like month over month growth on Steam stats because the only games that do that are like, you know, Sorry about that. Yep. Um, I had a bit of a hang up on my uh, team speak there. So, no you know, it's like, it's like, um, it's that I, Steam stats are fine as far as I'm concerned. Of course, it'd be great if they were like just like taken off. But like the type of game MechWarrior is, it's a great another, it gave us a little boost in the beginning. It gave it exactly what 99% of games get on Steam, right? They get, an initial boost of players just like any product and then after that it tails off and then it's just there it's just a, a presence another place for people to grab stuff another place for people to download the game and just to find out about the game to catch some news about the game and when we do do some you know marketing or whatever that they say oh great cool wow i've never heard of that game you know for the odd people that haven't oh it's available on steam i'll get it on steam i mean it's it's just another area. And right now, definitely Steam is a minority aspect compared to our own portal. But that's to be expected because our own portal was designed to be the dominant aspect of MechWare Online. I mean, that's where you can buy all the packages. That's where that's where the forums are. That's where the events are described. I mean, we market those things on Steam, but it all directs you back to the portal. So um, I, I, I'm not sure if I'm off talk on the question, but I guess the answer to the question is, um, you know, we have the academy now. We have the tutorial. You know, we have all those things. You know, the achievements. I mean, there's minor things coming along, like we have the command wheel that's coming to the thing. We have, you know, leaderboards for public queue. You can remind me to bring that up again. And talk about it. That's self-explanatory. There's some other minor things coming in that'll help a new player play the game. But for the most part, I can't really sit here and say we're going to do a lot more. I mean, there's Again, we're kind of back to like, it is what it is. And that's, I don't know that there's anything more that we're planning besides a few of those small things I just mentioned that's specifically geared towards new player experience. Yeah, and I can, you know, again, speaking from experience, uh, it's easy to look at a, a specific stat like that and make all kinds of assumptions, but those assumptions aren't necessarily right. You don't know what you don't know. Uh, I'll always go back to that. But also there are ongoing marketing efforts and uh, working with certain community people and, and things that are being worked on in the background that will, uh, you know, help bridge the gap for the new players um, that stuff that I'm working on uh, specifically. And and so it's it's not, you know, ignored or anything like that. Very much aware and moving forward on it. Um, as far as. You guys ready uh, to take another bio break? Yeah, let's do a bio break. Um, I need to refill my coffee and then we'll move on to the next segment of questions. So, yeah. All right, guys. like to say thank you again for coming out here. We're almost to uh, 600 people. Don't forget, retweets are appreciated. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, all the things. All the information is down below. Enjoy the animations and we'll be right back.
Get out of here, stalker. Engaged. All points attacking your target. All right, guys, and we are back from our bio break. Uh, just like to say welcome again to everyone out there. Thank you for uh, coming out on this Friday night, morning, evening, wherever you are in the world. Thank you guys for joining us again. Don't forget to click that follow button, and uh, let's go ahead and jump back into this. Darren? Yes, indeed. Welcome back to another town hall meeting with Russ Bullock, president of Prada Games, developers of MechWare Online. We're going on, what, let's see, six, seven, uh, heading up to two hours now. Uh, please remember, chat is being moderated, so keep it civil. And this live stream will be available on YouTube and SoundCloud tomorrow, so if you can't stick around, don't worry. Uh, you'll still be able to hear it all. Now, we were talking uh, before this most recent break about the new player experience um, and, and you know what is being done to ease that experience or whatever. I think one of the things that we can bring up, uh, because is, is it is near being uh, included in the game, is a command wheel. 
Um, and I do think that will be something that will help the new player experience, um, you know, leaps and bounds. I don't know, but it's uh, there's some people who don't use comms, uh, some people who have comms muted, and it'll be one more way for people to relay information and work together as a team. Russ, you want to talk about the command wheel at all? Yeah, so I mean, it's going to be, it's a, first off, I think it's an update to the way that the, um, Minimap is displayed. I mean, the battle grid I think is consistent, but the minimap itself is instead of being a small portion of the map, it's actually a, a you know a render of the entire map, and it has a much more of a um, you know kind of a, a battleship type of grid mentality where you see all the letters across the top and numbers across the bottom, or you know whatever you know. So you can basically you can still call out you know a six you know, what grid they're in, that's clear. But that way you can see the entire map, you can see where your team is, you know, on the map. And if they happen to spot enemies, you'll see where exactly without having to press B to go to the battle grid. There's still some advantage to going, pressing B and go to the battle grid to see everything full screen and to see the info on the players and some of the things you have now and to take Lance command and a few items. But it's more about being able to see the entire map at a glance in the mini map, pressing and holding the default key, which is E. And if you're, you know, if you're not the Lance commander, you've got like, oh, I think five ish commands, for example. And one of them is like, you know, help me. And when you press that, everyone on your team can look down. First off, it'll show up in the chat window and It'll be an audio cue, and the audio cue, and everyone will look down at the new, you know, mini map, and see your icon flash, and everyone will know that you called for help right over there at E3 without having to press the battle grid. So that's just one example, and then there's like a number of other commands that you can say, like attack my target and various things. If you are the lance commander, you've got additional things you can do up to ten-ish. So. Um, Lance Commander and the, you know, Company Commander. So there's things, it's really quick, you know, press the key, press and hold the key, and quickly with your mouse, boom, click something. And the, just like a lot of games, it puts the text in the chat window, there's the audio cue, and then there's some, also some indicator on the minimap, whether it's a flashing bit or whatever. So, you know, it's just a way to say, I'm over here, I need help. Oh, I spotted the enemy. Attack my target. And you'll have the audio cue, the text message, and the whole bit. So it's just another element. It's just another incremental aspect of coordination, especially for those that are not, you know, all piled on a TeamSpeak's, you know, server together. Cool. That sounds good. Somebody mentioned uh, there was some love out there for uh, Dave Forsey um, and his in-game tutorial. I know he was working on something right now. It's skipping my mind. Is that something that can be talked about? What David is up to, or is that well, uh, top yeah, secret? No, not, no, I'm not really aware of anything that I can discuss right now, or okay. but, you know, anything in particular. Except, I mean, there is an update coming in the May patch, which has, uh, I think, it's some minor updates to you know the existing tutorial with uh, what's been described as mech updates or something. You'll see that in the patch notes. Or, cool. you know, even in the roadmap upcoming, but, you know, nothing epically big. All right. Um, well, speaking of specific people at PGI, uh, there was a question specifically for Dennis, and he, it was, when will Dennis, Dennis let us have custom geometry? Is that waiting on Dennis? Is that waiting on you? No, it's definitely not waiting on Dennis um, at all. <laughs> um, that's just, you know, I mean, we're going to we're gonna finish the... We got phase three, we got to do decals, you know, and that kind of stuff. And then when decals are done, decals are finished, we can jump on uh, other aspects and maybe that would be custom geometry. But there are some technical hurdles there with um, mm -hmm. CryEngine in that the decal system and having the, the decals apply to the custom geometry pieces is, is a technical challenge. So. Um, right now, though, it's not held up by any of that stuff. It's just, it still wouldn't be worked on anyhow. It's still a matter of we finish phase three, got to get the decal system finished, et cetera, and then there'll come a time to focus on it. 
And so hopefully we're just a couple months away from being that it being a possibility of focusing on it. But right now it's not being held up by any person or anything. And are the, is the decal system, decal system for you Americans, uh, any closer than last time we talked? It's, it's still just right around the corner. No specific. Yeah, I mean, info. it's been on halt. It's been on pause for phase three to get out right. and such. So, uh, my expectation is that in the next several weeks, next couple of weeks, we'll be able to get everyone on it to finish it up. Cool. A uh, question in regards to units, um, unit logos and stuff. Has that something? Uh, have you guys looked into that for like CW or in-game uh, logos? Well, that'd be part of the decal system, right? Yeah, you know. Potentially, uh, even um, for like sorry, you know, you mean like did you say custom? Or yes, like uh, for instance, if you have a mercenary unit or whatever, to where maybe in game it actually shows your your unit logo. Is that something? Yeah, I mean, like I said, I've said before. I mean, so first step is to get it done and get it released, and you know, hopefully, it'll have a couple hundred you know, decals available for people to use, like the faction logos and all that kind of stuff. When all that's out and working and proven, and then the next step will be for us to create a, you know, player submitted type of methods for us to, you know, apply custom decals. But I, I highly doubt that'll be a part of the initial release phase. Gotcha. But Just... we, we want to do that, you know, for sure. Understood. They were connected. Mm, well, let's see. Looking through the questions, I mean, obviously there's a million. Well, first of all, understand, folks, a lot of these questions are frustrating for us as well because we know that the answer is there's Ooh, only so I got much one. that can be done. RW and... Felix asks, are there mm -hmm. plans to have video conferences for town halls? You guys just set up a pretty awesome lounge space at PGI. Is that something uh, you guys have been interested in? Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's it's all about the dev vlogs, right? It's... They've been on hold for a while. Uh, you know, people were busy, but also we wanted to get this space done to kind of go to another level with the death logs. And uh, now that the space is ready, that's really what it's there for. I mean, of course, it'll double up and, you know, Prana staff will be able to use it just to kind of relax after hours or whatever. But um, it's it's it was created mostly with the dev logs in mind. So um, we can gather people there in, a, in an environment like that and to create more interesting you know, content. All right. Well, yeah. Uh, as I was getting at, um, <laughs> I was saying specific mechs were being asked about in chat, but uh, Phil had a good question, needed to interrupt me. Um, but we got that out. So now talking about mechs and upcoming mechs, do you want to touch on that yet? Should we uh, hold off for a few more minutes? <clears throat> no, or... let's get her done. Let's get her so done. Let's do it. Next mech. New mechs. May, clan mech heavy. What is it going to be? There's a number of ways to this to like I guess I don't know uh, what's the word like. The, I, I, there's like three different ways I'd pronunciate the mech. Um, <laughs> I'm going with night gear. So it's obviously night gear, night gear. Those night are the gear, two. night gyre, yeah. night gyro. I don't know it, <laughs> the night euro. Gear. So the night gear, which is a 75 ton clan heavy mech um i think this thing is pretty fierce i mean this thing can give the timber wolf a run for its money this thing's a monster um what can i say it's it's gonna be a beast well we're waiting for the artwork i'm waiting yeah. for the, the the man to tell me because you know go oh, oh okay i'm just wondering you know that was the fill no, fire good. get her done Let's show this baby off. So we've got, uh, I believe, three different versions, which would be, of course, the standard uh, cam the, the green, um, as well as the special variant and the hero variant. So here we go. There it is. The night euro, <laughs> the night guy or the night year. It's a pretty sexy mech. I love that hero skin. So what's interesting about this, for those that may not know, it's a 75 ton mech that has Indo and Faro and also five jump jets that are fixed, but it also has a lower engine cap than the Timby. So it already has more payload space. So it'll actually be quite interesting. High mounts relatively and 
pretty cool shape. He definitely took the original and ran with it, at least personally. It was actually really cool talking to him as he progressed through the concept. And uh, yeah, another... Obviously reminiscent of the Nova Cat. What is the relationship between the two? Which one is based off of which? I forget. Um, but obviously Nova Cat-ish in its appearance, although... Uh, yeah, that's one hell of a mech. I'm just watching chat to see what they're going to know. But anyway, so what are we looking at as far as a uh, time frame on this, Russ? Well, I mean, that's uh, early May, um, probably around Wednesday-ish type of pre-order. And mm -hmm. um, geez, do the math. Uh, I forget. The last one was what, July? I think this is August. You know what I mean? It's just at one month after the last one. Yep. You guys understand the process at this point. Yes, there will always be new mechs, people. I feel like you should have to read off the comments people are making right now, Darren. I, I feel like. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Boy, a, a lot of uh, Mackie, 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 Mackie. Are, is there a group out there that is uh, targeting us with the Mackie? I feel like it's like the urban mech crowd. It's the exact it, it, same it thing, right? Same crowd it's that, I do you know. So. The Mackie, of course, is like the earliest mech or something like that. It's the first one, yes. The very first one. Anyway, um, the night gear it is, and uh, hopefully we'll see that up for sale next week. And so there's that. Why don't we leave the picture on for the rest of the town hall, and let's ask maybe a few more questions. So in regards to new mechs, uh, Russ, uh, are there any hints at what mechs are left that are being considered? Um, you know, obviously you guys have, you're coming out pretty much with every month a new. Um, any hints at the, the next, next one? No, I wouldn't do that to you guys. Um, no, it's better not to hint. Um, we've got, uh, we've got. I, I will say we've had at least the two, the next two mechs, unless something changes. Um, the next two after the night gear, night gear. See, I changed it myself. Mm -hmm. And the next two after the night gear are also Clan Omni mechs. So. For planners that were feeling left out with all that classic mechness, um, you got the night gear, and also the next two after that will almost certainly be clan omnis. And I believe, yeah, this could change, but it's probably another medium and another heavy. So much clan love for you planners out there. I'm I'm very inner sphere myself, but uh, I never will not want to see Alex Iglesias' amazing, amazing uh, art. He takes every mech and just turns it into a masterpiece. So cool. There's that news. So we'll see the reaction from out there. Um, so let's do a couple more questions real quick. Uh, Russ, anything regarding uh, music or audio in the works? Um, actually, quite a few people commented on the, the hero mech videos, that, the trailers that used to be out. And they love the music that went along with that. So, yeah, just, uh, I guess, a few different people wanting to know about any new music possible in the future and anything with audio. Uh, I guess the only thing I'll say for now is there is a new trailer geared around phase, Faction Play Phase 3 that will be released. Um, probably, I mean, there's a good chance we'll release it next week. So it's sneaking up pretty quick here in the next week-ish. Um, and that's, you know, kind of a... I mean, all, meant for all you guys, of course. You can soak it up and, you know, eat it up. But it's the next thing that'll kind of go out there into the, you know, internets and float through the nether and try to, you know, excite people and draw people into Mechor Online and Faction Play, Phase 3, and the whole bit. Um, and so that's going to be released fairly soon. And I'm not even positive I can promise new music on that or not. But that's, you know, that's mm -hmm. what the music guy has been, you know, because he's a sound guy too, has been working full time with, with Dennis on that video. So that's what he's been busy on. So that's all I know. about. Getting, what like, I hear about music. that is that it's nowhere near just a trailer either, that it's uh, turned out into quite the, uh, well, I don't want to give anything away. But it, um, I'm excited it's a to trailer, see it. but it's big. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a big it's, trailer. It's big. It's like long. I don't know. It's like seven minutes or something. So there, ridiculous. You said it. Yeah. yeah. 
It's so, a very we'll long. See. I haven't seen it yet. I haven't seen a rough draft yet. So I'm kind of waiting for them to say it's finished. So we'll see. You know, if it gets delayed, then you'll know that I was like, oh, my God, we can't release this. Um, we'll find out soon enough. But hoping for the best. Hoping it'll be really cool. And, um, you know, it'll just be a part of the legacy of, uh, of everything once it gets out there on the Internet. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Zoof, no, I have nothing to do with this. this. Is totally Dennis, the art department, uh, Sean, the sound guy. It's going to be epic. I love the stuff that they uh, put out. So I'm eagerly awaiting. I haven't seen it myself. I've just heard rumors. So we we can talk real briefly about the tournament. I think. Sure. Um, yeah, first that'd be off, great. Metcon. I hope everyone's going to come. Well, people um, are asking about be, when the tickets are going. Yeah, on Yeah, they should go on sale pretty soon. So I think in we're thinking early May. So hopefully in the next one to two weeks maximum. The tickets will go on sale. Um, not sure what else to tell you about that. We're trying to find out whether they're going to be, uh, you know, listed in Canadian or USD. Um, well, we're using Ticketmaster, but their their like price per ticket was obscene, way too much money. We found another option that was going to charge half as much, um, and that's a cost that you the guy that you you know you guys have to take on. They're going to come, so we wanted to go with the cheaper option. And I don't know for sure if we can listen in USD or Canadian, so it might be listed in Canadian, but we'll be sure to make it clear on the post, you know, kind of what the equivalency is in, in US, U.S. currency at that point. Um, the goal was to try to target around $50 U.S. Uh, the comparison being, I think, I'm not sure if we've mentioned this in past town hall or not, but like if you had a PAX or a Citizen Con or whatever, those sort of things I've looked on the internet, they're about 40 U.S., but you know, that's just access, I mean, for this tournament we're looking we're looking at first off of course access to a 12 p.m to 1 a.m event it's like a 12 13 hour type event um access to see the entire the world championship tournament um you're looking at lunch dinner and a late night snack so getting fed three different times and two drink tickets um so and then so that's i think it's a the value is huge compared to like maybe what four dollars gets you on all those so targeting sure. around 50 dollars us so if we can charge with the U.S., we'll probably just charge that. If it has to be Canadian, you're probably looking at around sixty dollars Canadian. Current exchange rates around about a quarter, one point two five on the on the dollar. So, um, fairly soon they'll go on sale. There's about eight hundred tickets for sale, as you know. Um, we we at this point we have like you'll see the website shows like two hundred and thirty two teams are registered. Those are partial teams and everything, of course. But we're over a hundred and we're, we're 131 completed teams at the moment. So that's that's a lot. I mean, that's huge. That's really happy about that. Um, they've got like a day or so to finish it. So we might hit 140, maybe even 140 plus completed teams. About 57% North America and 31 Europe, 11, 12 Oceanic. So when you combine those. It's about like our player base. You've got just, you know, 50 to 60% North America and then about, you know, between 40 and 50% percent rest of the world. So that's really indicative of the, you know, how our player base is dispersed. Um, there you well, go. Well, that's, yeah, I mean, that's Lots huge. Of involvement. Yeah, it's big. I think a lot of these teams are going to consolidate uh, over the next day or two. We'll see what happens. But, yeah, there's, oh, there's 232 teams registered right now. But like you're saying, about 140 of them are full, uh, which is still, like, huge. I mean, that's significantly more than the largest player-run leagues. Uh, obviously, the, a big part of that, I'm sure, is a prize pool, which is up to almost $126,000. Over 5,000 of those tournament support packs have been purchased. Um, and that prize pool just keeps going up and up yeah, and up. Yeah, who knows, right? I mean, we'll see. I'm not sure what we could do by the time December rolls around. That's a lot of time. Yeah. Um, based on how many people buy mech packs or whatever, I mean, uh, yeah, you know, I mean, it's it's feasible to get the cash prize up to 200000 Um, But who knows? I, I, you know, if it, if it ends up at even like 130000 or whatever, that's great. I think that's pretty cool. It's, you know, to up it by a significant like 25 30 percent increase in the total cash prize pool i'm already happy really yeah it's gonna be exciting and we're looking forward to uh meeting and hanging out with as many of you up there as possible yeah and let me just get this out there we'll try to make it clear on the website but just so people know because i know sometimes people like the conspiracy theory about things and like you know having a met con just so we're clear does not pay for the tournament it does not pay for the cash prize pool in fact 
selling tickets to Metcon won't even pay for the party, let alone the, let alone the cash prize pool. So we have 100,000 US committed to the cash prize pool, as you know. The party itself will probably cost anywhere from 80 to $100,000 Canadian. Do your math, maybe 70 to 80,000 US at least, maybe a little more. Selling the tickets will probably generate at most maybe 40,000 before taxes and stuff. So selling the tickets will probably only pay for about, at best, probably half the party if that by the time we get done we add a band or we do some other things we start spending some more money it'll probably pay for less than half of the party not even counting of course the hundred thousand dollars cash prize i just want to throw that out there just to make sure people are aware that we're not like you know the metcon everything's going to pay for everything we're going to make a whole bunch of money no it's going to be a net loss all in all it would it's, it's a nice offset it helps us to go the extra mile and to make sure the event is really memorable. But all in all, it, you know, it won't even pay for the event itself. Yeah. It's an investment into the community and the future of MWO. Um, but it's certainly not a money maker, but it's going to be fun. Correct. I'm hearing a lot of the planning that's going on. It's going to be fun. I can't wait. Um, all right. So that's about two hours. Um, Do we want to take a few questions from the audience real quick yeah, and we round can, it out? Is that cool with you, Russ? We can certainly look and see what comes up. Yeah, let's take a couple. Yeah. All right. Uh, and as far as where Metcon is going to be, that's going to be in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada in December, December 3rd. Um, so, yeah, let's see what is out there. Not going to answer anything about Mackies. Oh, her here's one, Russ. Just, uh, well, no, that's. Uh, that's questions not. about PVE. Um, yes. AI development, um, is that going good? Is it going? Uh, it's not going good because, you know, everyone's focused on, um, MacWare on, or, you know, phase three and, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's not, so I, I don't know, that's a loaded question. That's a difficult one to answer because yeah, I should have just said, yes, it's going good, but the answer <laughs> The answer is it's more complicated than that. Um, I, we've talked about this before, and I probably won't go into it very deep here tonight because I don't have all the information yet, nor is it the time to share it. But um, as I've kind of mentioned before, it's it's um, there's some you know difficult questions going on right now, and determining you know Mac Online's future with its technology base and what's going to happen with that technology base and if we should change it or switch it up and everything like that. And, um, I know there's a lot of people out there that are really in favor of it and they're really just thinking like it's a no brainer, but it's a complex question because, you know, Mecro online, you know, has to generate a certain amount of money to be viable product. And in order to just say, Hey, let's upgrade the whole engine. Um, you know, it's, that's not something we can make money on, right? That's a, that's a total, sink that's a you know not only that but it might impact the ability to make money on the product itself if your resources are dedicated to doing the switch over so there's a reason why very few established online games ever do a major engine upgrade because generally it's not seen you know determined to be viable you know just doesn't you know it just doesn't make sense so is there AI development going on right now? Yes. Um, do I envision there being PVE? And you know, are we talking about, we're not talking about single player right now, we're talking about PVE, right? Well, do I envision there being PVE for MechWare Online fans in the future? Yes. There you go. Uh, th there's a lot of people in the community, uh, Russ, that um, regularly do charity streams uh quite a few in the mech warrior online community and the uh sarah's jenner was obviously a big thing uh people wondering if uh you guys have ever considered doing another type of charity type cause like that a specific mech for a charity or anything like that yeah that was a really um you know that was a really great moment and um difficult but yeah great yeah i mean you know absolutely i would you know i think it was it was good in the sense that you know, to see a community come together like that and to, 
you even just get recognized as a you know as a gaming community but the mech Ryan online community was i mean that was really special right i mean what all you guys were able to do and come together for so that feels good you know that's where that's what those are the good moments in life to see you know as you serve people and you get that good feeling from that and that was really great and i loved it um i think of course we just want to be um you know to be natural you know i think if the right thing you know comes along we'll know it and um yeah it's not something you can really plan for necessarily yeah, I mean, right i guess i mean sure you can go looking for it and there's some guys that are so good at that there's credit to all those guys out there that are really kind of go seeking those opportunities i i give them full credit and i'm i hope we can continue to support you guys in doing that as best we can um you know i i, I wish we could go looking for it more and yeah. maybe we should maybe that's what i should take from this but um certainly if this if the right thing comes across our plate and we just you know if we recognize it when we see it i you know i'd love to support that for sure all right. Well, guys, I think we're going to wrap it up for tonight's town hall. It's been uh, just over two or about two hours now because uh, we did start a little bit late. But anyway, um, let's get into our weekends. Let's have some fun. We did uh, talk about a lot of things tonight. Phase three is in. There'll be obviously updates and changes as the uh, patches come in. New things, um, command wheel coming in the next patch, et cetera. Um, rescale on the horizon. Lots of exciting things, and of course, of course, the night gear, night gear, Euro, whatever. Uh, another sexy mech from Alex Iglesias uh, is coming as well. So, just want to thank you all for showing up, for hanging out with us. We had a good turnout. Uh, appreciate you all being here and all of the support. Russ, thank you again. It is the end of the month, the end of your work week, and the end of the day. Uh, so, I know you're exhausted usually when we get to these town halls, but you make the effort, and we appreciate that. Um, yeah, I think that's about it for tonight. Yeah, nice. yeah. thanks, everybody. Thanks for playing. Thanks for your support. And, um, you know, we're, we're here. We're going to continue to work on the game as best we can and uh, continue to move forward. Thank you. Absolutely. Quick shout out yep. to everyone out there again. Thank you guys for coming out here again. If you are new and you enjoyed the stream, and of course, I actually will be streaming right after this as well. So don't forget to click that follow button. And uh, guys, we'll be uh, going down just for a few minutes as far as a uh, intermission, and we'll be continuing on. So again, thank you so much for coming out. Click that follow button. Check us out on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. This will actually be going up on YouTube and SoundCloud within the next, uh, I think, like 24, 48 hours. So guys, have a great uh, weekend. Be safe, and we'll see you guys in a few minutes. Until next time, MechWarriors.